Welcome to Science Era. In this video, we're going to discuss Exploring Life, which is chapter number one from Biology's seventh edition by Neil Campbell. Let's begin. Starting with the overview of biology's most existing era. When I say biology, it means it is the scientific study of life. Biologist questions can be ambitious. They may ask how a single tiny cell become a tree or a dog, how the human mind work, or how the different form of life in a forest interact. When questions occur to you as you observe the natural world, you are thinking like a biologist. Biologist is the person who study biology, which is the scientific study of life. More than anything else, biology is a quest and ongoing inquiry about the natures of life. The phenomena we call life defies a simple one sentence definition. We recognize life by what living things do. At the most fundamental level, we may ask what is life? Even a child realizes that a dog or a plant is alive while a rock or a car is not. Yet the phenomena we call life defies a simple one sentence definition. We recognize life by what living things do. Let's look at some of the properties of life. The figure on the screen shows seven properties of life. These are order, evolutionary adaptation, response to environment, regulation, energy processing, growth and development and reproduction. When I say order, this is close up of a sunflower illustrated the highly ordered structure that characterizes the life. The next one is evolutionary adaptation. The overall appearance of this pygmy seahorse cam camouflage the animal in its environment. Such adaptation evolves over the countless generation by reproduction success of those individuals with heritable traits that are best suited to the to their environment. Then we have response to the environment. The Venus flytrap on the left closed its trap rapidly in response to the environmental stimulus of a grasshopper landing on the open trap. So this is the response to the environment. Next is regulation. The regulation of blood flow through the blood vessels of this jackrabbit ear helps maintain a constant body temperature by adjusting heat exchange with surrounding air. Then we have energy processing property of life. Here you can see the bird which obtains fuel in the form of nectar from the flower. The bird will use chemical energy stored in its food to power fight, to power flight and other work. Next property is growth and development. Inherited information carried by gene controls the pattern of growth and development of organisms such as the oak seedling or in this case the crocodile baby. The last property of life is organism um, reproduction where we know that organisms or living things reproduce their own kind in this case you can see penguin and the baby penguin so we said seven properties of life are order evolutionary adaptation response to environment regulation energy processing growth and development and reproduction biologists explore life from the microscopic to the global scale Biology is a subject of enormous scope and exciting new biological discoveries are being made every day. How can you organize into a comprehensible framework all the information that you will encounter as you study the broad range of topics including in the biology? Focusing on the new idea will help. Five main themes or five ways of thinking about life that we still hold through decades from now are number one organization information energy and matter interaction and evolution these are the five points which we remember or which we which we think or study when we are studying about the life 
in this section and the next we'll def uh, briefly define and explore each thing so the study of life we know that it extends from the microscope scale of molecule and the cell to the global scale of entire the hierarchy of life extend through the many level of biological organization let's look at the hierarchy of life starting from the biosphere from the biosphere to the organism the biosphere even from the space we can see signs of life on earth in the green mosaic of the forest for example we can see the entire biosphere which consists of all the life on earth and all the places where life exists most region of land most bodies of water the atmosphere to an altitude of several kilometers and even the sediments far below the ocean floor we can see in the biosphere after biosphere then we have ecosystem so this one is the biosphere where you can see the whole earth and then next image shows the ecosystem an ecosystem consists of all the living things in the particular area along with all the non-living components of the environment with which life interacts such as soil, water, atmospheric gases and light. After ecosystem, coming down in the hierarchy, we have communities. The array of organisms inhabiting a particular ecosystem is called a biological community. The community in our meadow ecosystem includes many kinds of plants, various animals, mushroom, and other fungi or enormous number of diverse microorganisms such as bacteria, which are too small to seen by the naked eye. Communities, then we have population. A population consists of all the living individual of species living within the bounds of a specified area. For example, our meadows include a population of lupine and a population of mule deer. Then we have organism. Organism is the individual living things are called individual living things are called organism. Each plant in the middle is an organism and is each animal, fungus and bacterium is organism. Then we have organs and organ system. The structural hierarchy of life continues to unfold as we explore the architecture of a complex organism. A leaf is an example of an organ, a body part that is made up of multiple tissues and has a specific function in the body. Leaves, stems and roots are the major organ of the plant. Within an organ, each tissue has a distinct arrangement and contributes particular properties of, to the organ function. So after organs, we have tissues. Each tissue is a group of cells that work together performing a specialized function. The cell shown here has been cut on an angle. The honeycomb tissue in the interior of the left is the main location of photosynthesis, the process that converts the light energy to the chemical energy of sugar and the jigsaw puzzle like skin on the surface of the leaf is a tissue called epidermis. The pores through the epidermis allows entry of gases like carbon dioxide, a raw material for the sugar production. After tissues, we have cells. Cell is a light fundamental unit of a structure and function. Some of some of uh, some organisms consist of single cell which perform all the function of life. Other organisms are multicellular and have features and features a division of labor among the specialized cells. Then we have organelle. Chloroplast is an example of organelle. The various functional components present in the cell. The image below is um, taken by a powerful microscope shown a single chloroplast. Lastly, on number 10, we have molecule. A molecule is a chemical structure consisting of two or more units called atoms, represented as balls in this computer graphic of the chlorophyll molecule. Chlorophyll is the pigment that makes a leaf green and it absorbs sunlight during the photosynthesis 
Within each chloroplast, millions of chlorophyll molecules are organized into a system that converts light energy to the chemical energy of food. So, in the hierarchy of life, we said, starting from the biosphere, we have ecosystem, communities, population, organisms, organ, tissue, organelle, cells, and then lastly, we have molecules. Each organism interacts with its environment. Both organisms and environments are affected by the interaction between them. The exchange of energy between an organism and its surrounding often involves the transformation of one form of energy to another. Energies flow through an ecosystem, really entering as the sunlight and existing as the heat. There is one way of flow of energy in an ecosystem. During photosynthesis, plant converts energy from sunlight to chemical energy stored in food molecules such as sugars, which is used by plants and other organisms to do work and is eventually lost from the ecosystem as heat. In contrast, chemical cycle between organism and the physical environment. When a plant's leaf absorbs sunlight, molecules within the leaf converts the energy of sunlight to chemical energy of food, such as sugars, as we said. In the process of photosynthesis, chemical energy in the food molecule is then passed along by the plants and other photosynthetic organisms. These are called producers to consumers. Consumers are the organisms such as animals that feed on other organisms to or their remains to survive. Next we have a cell. It is the lowest level of organization that can perform all the activities required for life. Within cell structures called chromosomes contain genetic materials in the form of DNA. DNA is uh, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acids. In the cells that are preparing to divide, the chromosome may be made visible using a dye that appears blue when bound to the DNA, as you can see in the photo. Cells heritable information. Cells contain chromosomes made partly of DNA, the substance of gene, which programs the cell production. Of proteins and transmit transformation from parent to the offspring. The figure 1.6 shows the inherited DNA directs development of an organism, starting with egg cell, then fertilized egg with DNA from both parents, formation of embryo cells with copies of inherited DNA, and finally offspring with traits of inherited from with traits inherited from both parents. Before a cell divides, the DNA is first replicated or copied and each of the two cellular offsprings inherit a complete set of chromosomes identical to that of the parent cell. Each chromosome contains one very long DNA molecule with hundreds and thousands of genes. Each, um, each a section of DNA of the chromosomes transmitted from the parents to the offspring. Genes are units of inheritance. They encode information necessary to build all the molecules synthesized within a cell, which in turn establish that the cell's identity and function. You begin as a single cell stocked with DNA inherited from your parents. The replication that DNA prior to each cell division transmitted copies of DNA to what eventually become the trillions of cells of your body. As the cell grows and divides, the genetic information encoded by DNA directed your development. The molecular structure of DNA accounts for its information rich nature. So in the figure, you can see figure A shows DNA double helix and the figure B shows single strand of the DNA. DNA double helix, this model shows the atom in a segment of DNA made up of two long chains or strands of building block called nucleotides 
A DNA molecule takes the 3D forms of a double helix. A single strand of DNA, the geometrical, uh, these geometric shapes and letters are simple symbols for the nucleotides in a small section of one strand of a DNA molecule. Genetic information is enclosed in specific sequence of four types of nucleotide, which are A, T, C, D, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. The molecular structures of DNA accounts for its ability to store information. As we said, a DNA molecule is made up of two long chains, or the, the, the chains are called strands, are arranged in a double helix. Each chain is made up of four chemicals building blocks called nucleotide. Nucleotides are abbreviated as ATCG. A stands for adenine, T stands for thymine, C for cytosine, and G for guanine. Two main forms of cells. All cells share certain characteristics. They are all enclosed by a membrane. They, are, uh, they all use DNA as genetic information. Two main forms of cells are eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic Eukaryotic cells are subdivided by internal membranes into various membrane enclosed organelles. So in simple words we can say a eukaryotic cell contain membrane enclosed organelle. Some organelle such as DNA containing nucleus are found in the cells of all eukaryotes. Other organelles are specific to particular cell type. For example, chloroplast is an organelle found only in eukaryotic cells that carry out photosynthesis. In eukaryotic cells, we have prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells lack the kind of membrane enclosed organelle found in the eukaryotic cells. So, prokaryotic cell lacks a nucleus or other membrane enclosed organelle. Furthermore, prokaryotic cells are generally smaller than the eukaryotic cells. Then we have biological systems, concept 1.2. Biological systems are much more than the sum of their parts. A system is a combination of components that form a more complex organization. Emergent properties of system due to increasing complexity, complexity, new properties emerge with each step upward in the hierarchy of a biological order. For example, Photosynthesis, although photosynthesis occur in an intact chloroplast, it will not take place in disorganized test tube mixture of chlorophyll and other chloroplast molecules. The coordinated process of photosynthesis requires a specific organization of these molecules in the chloroplast. Isolated component of living system, the object of study in reductionist approach, lack a number of significant properties that emerges at a higher level of organization. The power and limitation of reductionism. Reductionism involves reducing complex systems to simpler components that are more manageable to study. To fully explore the emergent properties, biologists today complement reductionism with system biology. Exploration of a biological system by analyzing the interaction among its parts. In this context, a single cell leaf can be considered a system as can a frog, an ant colony, or a desert ecosystem. By examining and modeling the dynamic behavior of an interacted network of components, system biology enables us to pose new kinds of questions. For example, how do network of molecular interaction in our bodies generate our 24 cycles of wakefulness and sleep? At a larger scale, how does a gradual increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide alters the ecosystem and entire biosphere? System biology can be used to study life at all the levels. The study of DNA structure is an example of reductionism. It has led to further study of heredity such as human genome project. System biology. System biology seeks to create models of a dynamic behavior of the whole biological system. 
with each model scientists will be able to predict how a change in one part of the system will affect the rest of the system as he said questions like how do network of molecular interaction in our bodies generate our 24 hour cycles of wakefulness and sleep these are all part of system biology System biology is now taking hold in the study of life at the cellular and molecular level. It includes three key research and development, high throughout technology, bioinformatics, and interdisciplinary research task. Feedback regulation in the biological system. A kind of supply and demand economy applies to some of the dynamics of biological systems. Consider the regulation of blood sugar levels, for instance. Cell in the body must match the supply of fuel, in this case sugar, to demand, regulating the opposing processes of sugar breaking down and storage. The key is the ability of many biological processes to self-regulate by mechanism called feedback. In feedback regulation, the output or the product of the processes regulated uh, regulates that very process. The most common form of regulation in the living system is the negative feedback. In a negative feedback, an accumulation of an end product slows the process that produces the product. Or we can say a negative feedback is a loop in which the response reduces the initial stimulus. For example, if you are examining the insulin signaling, after a meal, the level of sugar glucose in your body will rise, which stimulates the cell of the pancreas to secrete insulin. Insulin in turn will cause the body cells to take up glucose and liver cells to store it, thus decreasing the blood glucose level. This eliminates the stimulus for insulin secretion, shutting off the pathway. Thus, the output of process negatively regulates the process. Another type of feedback is the positive feedback, where end product speeds up the production. Feedback, uh, positive feedback in which an end product speeds up its own production. Example is the clotting of your blood in response to injury when a blood vessel is damaged. Structure in the blood called platelet begins to aggregate at the site. Positive feedback occur as chemical released by the platelet attaches, attract more platelet. The platelet pile up, then initiates a complex process that seals the bound with the clot. So this is an example of positive feedback. Next concept is biologists explore life across its great diversity of species. Diversity is the hallmark of life. Theodosius once said, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. To understand evolution, we must understand the diversity of life on the planet. Taxonomy is the branch of biology that names and classifies species according to a system of broader and broader groups. Classifying life. There are seven major levels of classification, which includes kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. The three domains of life. At the highest level, the life is classified into the domains. So domains are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Domain bacteria and domain archaea consist of prokaryotes, while domain eukarya consist of eukaryotes which includes the various protist kingdoms and the kingdom plantae, fungi and animalia. Life's three domains are domains bacteria, archaea and eukarya. Domain bacteria. Bacteria are the most diverse and widespread prokaryotes and are now classified into the multiple kingdom. Each rod-shaped structure in the photo, photo is the bacterial cell. Then we have Domain Archaea. Domain Archaea includes multiple kingdoms. Some of the prokaryotes 
uh, known as archaea lives in earth's extreme environment such as salty lakes and boiling hot springs each round structure in this photo is archaeal cell then we have domain eukarya which consists of protist plantae animalia and fungi Kingdom Plantae consists of terrestrial multicellular eukaryotes that carry out photosynthesis, the conversion of light energy into the chemical energy to uh, in the food. Kingdom Fungi is defined in part by the nutritional mode of its member, such as mushroom, which absorb nutrients from outside their bodies. Then we have Kingdom Animalia, which consists of multicellular eukaryotes that ingest other organisms. And then lastly, we have Kingdom protists, which are mostly unicellular eukaryotes and some relatively simple multicellular relatives. Scientists are currently debating how to classify protists in a way that accurately reflects their evolutionary relationship. Unity in diversity of life. As diverse as life is, it is also it also displays remarkable unity. Consider, for example, the similar skeletons of different animals and the universal genetic language of DNA, both mentioned earlier, which, co uh, which in, uh, contain the genetic codes of the animals. In fact, similarities between organisms are evident at all levels of biological hierarchy. For example, unity is obvious in many features of cell structure, even among the distant related organisms. For example, in the picture, you can see an example of unity underlying the diversity of life, the architecture of cilia in eukaryotes. Cilia, singular word is cilium for cilia are extension of cells that function in locomotion. They occur in eukaryotes as diverse as paramecium, which are found in the pond water and humans. Even organisms so different share a common architecture of their cilia which have an elaborate system of tubules that is striking in a cross-sectional view. So the blue one represents cilia in the windpipe cell and the pink one is the cilia in paramecium. The cilia is a single-celled paramecium propels the organism through the pond water while the cilia windpipe, the cells that line the human windpipe are equipped with cilias that help keep the lungs clean by sweeping a firm film of debris trapping mucus upwards. Concept 1.4 Evolution accounts for the unit life's unity and diversity. The history of life is a saga of changing earth billions of years old. Evolutionary view of life came into sharp focus in 1859 when Charles Darwin published on the origin of species by the natural selection. The origin of species articulates two main points, descent with modification and natural selection. Darwin's theory of natural selection. Darwin proposed natural selection as the mechanism for evolutionary adaptation of the population to their environment. So, population of organism is divided into two parts, heredity variation and overproduction and struggle of existence. Then differences in reproductive success and finally evolution of adaptation in the population define the population of organisms. Natural selection is the evolutionary process that occurs when a population's heritable variation are exposed to the environmental factors that favors the reproductive success of some individuals over others. The product of natural selection are often executive adaptation of organisms to the special circumstances of their way of the life and their environment. Then we have tree of life. Many related organisms have a very similar anatomical features and adapted for their specific way of life. Such example of kingship connects life, unity and diversity to Darwin's concept of descent with modification. Darwin proposed that natural selection could enable an ancestral species to split into two or more descendant species resulting in the tree of life. Each species is on a twig of a branching tree of life extending back in a time through ancestral species more and more remote. 
all of the life is connected to its long evolutionary history. Concept 1.5 discuss the biologist use various form of inquiry to explore life. At the heart of science is inquiry, a search of information and explanation, often focusing on the specific question. Biology blends two main processes of scientific inquiry, discovery science and hypothesis-based science. Discovery science describes natural structures and processes as accurately as possible through careful observ observation and analysis of data. Types of data Data are recorded observation and can be quantitative or qualitative. Induction in discovery science in inductive reasoning, scientists de derive generalization based on a large number of specific observations. In the science, inquiry that are specific questions usually involve the proposing and testing of hypothetical explanation or hy a hypothesis is a tentative answer to a well-framed question and explanation on trial makes prediction that can be tested. We all use hypotheses in solving everyday problems. We absorb, uh, we observe, and then ask questions. So, in this case, hypothesis one is dead batteries. Prediction will be replacing batteries. Will fix the problem. Will test the prediction by replacing batteries, and will see if the hypothesis is false or true. Number two. Uh, Number two hypothesis says that there is a burnt out bulb in the torch. Prediction will be replacing the bulb will fix the problem. Test the prediction by replacing the bulb and test done uh, does not falsely falsify hypothesis. So the hypothesis number two is true. Deduction the if and then logic of hypothesis based science. In deductive reasoning, the logical flow from the general to a specific. If a hypothesis is correct, then we can expect a particular outcome. A scientific hypothesis must have two important qualities. It must be testable and it must be falsifiable. The scientist method is an idealized process of inquiry. Very few scientific inquiries adhere to the textbook scientific method. A case study in the scientific inquiry investigating mimicry in snake population. In mimicry, a harmless species resembles a harmless species, harmful species. So, in this case, flower fly non stinging and the honeybee is stinging. So, honeybee is harmful species and the flower fly is the harmless species. In this case study, mimicry in king snake is examined. The hypothesis is predicted that predator in the non-coral snake areas will attack king snake more frequently than will predator that lives where coral snakes are present. To test this mimicry hypothesis, researchers made hundreds of artificial snake and experimental group resembling king snake and a control group of plain brown snake. After a given period of time, researchers collected data that fit a key prediction. Experiments must be designed to test the effects of one variable by testing control group and experimental group in a way that cancels the effects of unwanted variables. Science cannot address the supernatural phenomena because hypotheses must be testable and falsifiable and experimental results must be repeatable. Theories in science, a scientific theory is broad in scope, generate new hypotheses and is supported by a large body of Then we have model building in science. Models of ideas, structure and processes help us understand the scientific phenomena and make predictions. Science is a social activity characterized by both cooperation and competition. Technology. Technology applies scientific knowledge for some specific purpose. Concept 1.6 A set of themes connect the concept of biology. Underlining themes provides a framework for understanding biology.
there are 11 things that unify biology. Scene number one is cell. Cell are every organism's basic unit of structure and function. The two main types of cells are prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. The next is heritable information. The continuity of life depends on the inheritance of the biological information in form of DNA molecules. This genetic information is encoded in the nucleotide sequence of the DNA. Third property is emergent properties of biological system. The living world has a hierarchical organization extending from molecules to the biosphere. With each step upward in the level, system properties emerges as a result of interaction among components at the lower level. Then we have regulation. Regulation includes positive and uh, negative feedback mechanisms. Interaction with environment is another theme that unify biology, uh, which includes organisms, are open system that exchange the materials and energy with their surroundings. And organisms' environment include other organisms as well as the non-living factor. Then we have energy and life. All organisms must perform work which requires energy. Energy flows from sunlight to produce uh, to producers, then to consumers. Next theme is unity and diversity. Biologists took the diversity of life into three main uh, three domains, which are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. As diverse as life is, we can also feel the unity, such as universal genetic code. The more closely related two species are, the more characteristics they share. Then we have evolution. Evolution's biological core theme explains both unity and diversity of life. The dwarfism, uh, Darwin's theory of natural selection, accounts for the adaptation of population to their environmental through the differential reproductive success of varying individuals. Structure and function form the functions are correlated at the level of biological organization. Scientific inquiry, the process of science includes the observation, uh, observation based discovery and the testing of explanation through the hypothesis based inquiry. Lastly, we have science, technology, and society. Many te uh, technologies are goal-oriented application of the science. The relationship of the science and technology to the society are now more crucial to understand than ever before. So this, uh, with the 11 theme that unify biology, we uh, have reached the end of unit 1, which discusses the biology and theme. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe for more.